So uh, the, the, the big question is, what was the star of Bethlehem? And uh, to save you waiting, I mean, I'm going to talk for about 35 minutes. So to save you waiting, I'm going to give you the punchline right now. Are you ready for it? Okay. Okay. So the punch punchline is. We don't know. <laughs> sure. Okay. So. Um, um, I, I, I've got to keep expectations low here, so I don't want you to think there's going to be some marvelous re re revelation of this is what the Star of Bethlehem was. Um, but, um, however, um, it turns out that the, that the Star of Bethlehem, the whole topic, it's a great vehicle for exploring the relationship between uh, astronomy and, and the connection between astronomy and, and history, and, and the, the Bible is, is, is history as, as well there. So, so there's a lot of interesting stuff here. And it, it's a, a topic which is of interest to astronomers. Um, perhaps you've been to a planetarium uh, where they show, they show the stars on the sky and the dome at Christmas time. And uh, it's a popular thing that they will do there is have a show about the star of Bethlehem. And certainly there's one of the theories I'll tell you about works very well as, as a planetarium show. And um, so, so, some some uh, astronomy professors will you know, teach about the star of Bethlehem in their classes because it's an interesting topic that the, that the students are curious about. Okay, so I'm going to start with with this uh, this wall here, um, and uh, I was going to ask you, can you guess what it is? But actually, I think I put I put I put down the, the bottom of it, what it is. Okay, so this is a from um, so the Romans when they had victories and they, they conquered things, they um, uh, they erected triumphant arches and with pictures and, and things on them, and this is. Um, from a wall of one of those triumphant arches. And this depicts the Roman armies destroying Jerusalem and destroying the uh, 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 temple there. Um, so it, they're, they're carrying off things here. There's the, the famous uh, seven uh, candelabra up there. I think those trumpets were stolen from the temple as well, and sort of the, the signs and the banners and, and, and so on. So um, this was a, a, a huge bad event in, in Jewish history. Um, in 70 AD, the temple was destroyed, the high priesthood was abolished, uh, temple sacrifices uh, stopped, and, um, and uh, uh, if you've been to a, a Jewish services and ceremonies since then, you, you know that, that they, they changed uh, because of that. Now, the interesting thing about this is um, for history, because we're talking about history now, the thing about history is, the Bible never mentions the fall of Jerusalem as having happened. Um, it doesn't say it happened, it doesn't say I've told you so, any, anything like that. There's a complete silence about this. And um, the, the natural explanation of, of this is simply that the New Testament was written uh, uh, before 70 AD. Uh, and um, now Jesus was, was probably killed in, in AD uh, 33. So this is uh, this means that the, the New Testament were, each book was, was written before 70 AD. Now that, that's, that's 37 years. And that's now that's now if, if you are if you're under the under the age of 15 or something, that probably seems like a long time. But but. Um, um, so some of us are a, a little bit older than that. Um, and for, for example, the Barb and I have been married for for uh, getting on for uh, forty two years, I think. But forty two years, now, that's much longer than the time between the the, the crucifixion of Jesus and the uh, destruction of the temple. And and and, and to to us, um, if you're a bit older, if you, if you think think back 30, 40 years ago, no, it's, it's like yesterday. It's, it seems like you know, that uh, Bob and I were like, getting married only, only yesterday. Um, um, and um, uh, the, the, um, I mentioned that the book of Hebrews, for example, uh, talks about uh, about temple sacrifices going on in the temple at the time. So it's, it's clearly at the time. And the book of Hebrews refers to things in the Gospels and so on. So. Um, and let's look in particular at um, St. Matthew's Gospel. And I'm going to say a, a, a little bit about St. Matthew's Gospel and then, and then um, 
Elnoise is going to come up and she's going to go and read the, 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 the story. And I'm going to give you some questions to pay, pay attention to. And, and after that, we're, um, we're going to have a little quiz. And the, the rule with, with, with the quiz is um, the youngest people have to answer the questions first. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, so better, better, better pay attention. Right? Okay, so um, um, we, we, we had Jesus, we had his disciples and the apostles. And then after that, um, there were some people who were in the Bible um, uh, called, the, who we refer to as the, the church fathers. So they're the next couple of generations there. And, and they also wrote things, and we have things that they, that they wrote. And, and they, by the way, do talk about the, the, the destruction of, of Jerusalem. Um, and they were all quite unanimous that the, the, the first gospel in the New Testament, there were four accounts of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the first one, um, Matthew, was written by Matthew, the tax collector. He's also surnamed or called Levi as well. So he's one of the 12 disciples. Uh, we don't know much about him apart from him, him being a, a tax collector, which, which but, by the way, they didn't talk about politics here. Um, 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 Levi or Matthew were a tax collector. That, uh, on the political spectrum there, um, meant that, that you were a collaborator with the occupying, the evil occupying Roman forces there. You were collecting taxes for them. And by the tax collection then, it was sort of more like organized crime than it was like the IRS. Um, then um, um, Jesus also had another disciple called Simon the, the Zealot. The Zealots, they were the ones who wanted to kick the Romans out. So, so it's a good, good lesson for us here that Jesus among his disciples had people at different ends of the political spectrum. That's a good, good point to note. Okay, uh, so Matthew is one of what's called the, the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. These describe mostly similar events, but in different styles that were aimed at different audiences. Um, John Burke, the, um, the, the former pastor here, um, and now, now we're retired, he told me one evening, he said, you know, when we read the Gospels in English, the English translations, they, they tend to make them sound rather similar, but actually when you go back to the Greek, the, 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 the style of them is, is, is pretty different. Each one has their own characteristics and so on. So Matthew was writing to a, a, a Jewish audience. Um, um, it, it's, it's thought that he could well have written it um, in Aramaic, which was the native language of the time there, um, and then translated into Greek. Actually, that's a really hard question to resolve because uh, uh, because when you're talking mixed languages, you, you, you tend to take words of one language into the other. Anyhow, anyhow but Matthew is aiming at Jewish audience. Mark, um, um, according to the, the church fathers, was the uh, translator of the apostle Peter. Not surprisingly, you hear a lot about Peter in St. Mark's gospel. Um, and he was written for non-Jews. So um, when some Jewish ceremony came to me or some terminology, he explains what it is. Matthew doesn't do that because he's writing to a, a Jewish audience. And then the third of these gospels, um, it was written by Luke, and Luke was, was a, a doctor who traveled along with St. With Paul, and he also wrote um, Acts of, of, the, of the Apostles. If you, if you take out your Bibles and look, you look at what Luke's Gospel says, beginning and Acts of the Apostles, you see the same guy wrote rather similar introductions to the, the, the two of them there. Um, there's been a, a scholarly debate about um, whether Mark's Gospel is an abridged version of what um, Matthew wrote, or um, whether Matthew expanded upon what, what, what Luke wrote, um, but that doesn't really concern us here. Um, but I'm still talking about you know, when, when were things written. It doesn't concern us because of Luke. And Luke's, if you go and read the beginning of Luke's gospel, he, he says he wrote it after of, of the gospels, presumably Matthew and Mark, whatever they use. Um, and he also wrote um, 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 Acts of, of the Apostles uh, as well, as I said. And I like to think of that as being like paper two. Now, um, I mentioned that I do, I do research in astronomy. And when we do research in astronomy, we, we publish things in journals. And uh, pretty often we, we'll publish one paper, um, we call it paper one about some topic, and then we have a second paper on the same or, or related topic, we call it paper two. And often in, in introduction, paper two will say, as we said in paper one, blah, 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 and so on. And then we'll talk about paper number two. That's sort of what Luke does in the beginning of Acts of the He says, well, in my first account, and he's referring to, to the gospel there. Okay, now the, the ending of Luke's of, so Acts of the Apostles is, it's, it's pretty exciting. It's got a shipwreck. Paul goes to, to, to Rome. And it ends up with Rome, um, with Paul pretty happily in Rome. 
He's in the, he's the house arrest there, but his friends can come and see him. He's actually paying his own rent there as well, so he's going to income, I assume, some, some money somehow. Uh, and North South fine. But what we know from other history is uh, well, he's winning a trial as well. We don't know how the trial came out. And, um, and, 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 and we know, unfortunately, that in 67 AD, he got killed. So, so it, the, the book ends at 63 AD, uh, and you thought that if you'd written later, then, then uh, uh, Luke would have told us, hey, well, Paul had his head chopped off and so on. I mean, we don't get told that. So this is at this point, AD 63. Now, let's remember, okay, here's his part of your, your quiz. Was Luke the first gospel to be written? Yeah. Right, okay, it was not the first gospel. So, so the other ones are written before that. Um, and the Matthew and Mark. So we're, we're going back a fair ways there. And so this means that Matthew's gospel was, was written uh, within a couple of decades of the death of Jesus. Now, Jesus's mom was alive at the crucifixion. She was she unfortunate, but it was right there when she was hanging on the cross. Um, the, the death of Jesus's mom is not described in the Bible, but, um, but an excellent biblical source says that she had uh, about a, a, a dozen years uh, after the, the crucifixion, so she would have died in the sort of late fifties or sixties, that, that kind of age. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, so she's around to, to tell anybody who wants to listen to her about what happened with the birth of Jesus. Okay, so now, so, so um, I, I warned you that we're we're going to have a little quiz here. So, um, um, when um, so when when Eleanor reads. Um, uh, the, the story of, of the wise man coming. Here's, here's what I want you to, to notice. So if you remember these questions. Um, so where does it say that the wise men, or the magi they're called, uh, where do they come from? Where did they uh, say that they'd seen the star? Where in the sky did they, they, they see the star? Um, <coughs> what did King Herod want to know about the, from the magi and why did he want to know it? When the magi left Jerusalem, what direction was the star? Uh, when they came to where Jesus was, where was the star? In what direction were they? And finally, uh, and after the wise men have been to Jesus, what more do we hear about about, about the star after that? Okay, so God's question been, been memorized. So, so um, Ellen's going to come up now, and she's going to go and read uh, the, the, the story. If you want to follow along, this by this by the way is going to be an open book exam. You're allowed to you consult, consult your Bible. Um, you know. Okay. Okay, Matthew chapter two. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way and the star, which they had seen in the east, went on before them until it came and stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Now when they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night and left for Egypt. He remained there until the death of Herod. 
This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Then when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he became very enraged and sent and slew all the male children who were in Bethlehem and all its vicinity from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the Magi. Then what had been spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she refused to be comforted because they were no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go into the land of Israel for those who sought the child's life are dead. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned by God in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee and came and lived in a city called Nazareth. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you very much. We've been applauded, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, 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 before I, I get to... Uh, a quiz. Um, some, some, oops, uh, some uh, uh, geography here. I, I, I went to Google, Google Maps, and to find out where things were here. So on the left hand side there, this shows the 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 path that uh, Joseph and Mary and, uh, and the baby Jesus goes inside Mary and uh, took from the Bethlehem. It is slightly cut off the top of my screen. So, so Nazareth is right there at the top of the screen there. Um, if you drive, and the, 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 the roads here are probably more or less the, the, the way that Joseph and Mary came because this is, this is sort of flat here and there are hills here. And so, so you travel on the plain and then you go up to the hills because uh, 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 Jerusalem is pretty high on the mountain there. Um, so uh, according to, to Google, if, 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 the, if the traffic's favorable and the road works, there's some road works down there, then, um, uh, uh, then um, it, it takes a bit under two hours to get there by car. Um, Joseph and Mary went on a car, of course. They were walking. Um, Mary was pregnant as well. Um, and so it, it, um, I had a guess. It probably took them about a week and a half. They're really fast, maybe a week. Um, um, we don't, we don't, often it shows riding a donkey, but maybe they're walking. Who knows? Um, so it took about a week and a half for, for them to uh, get there. This is the final stretch on the right hand side of the screen here. This is going from Jerusalem down to Bethlehem. That's, um, well, if you take these roads here, uh, this is not, probably not what people took, but the, the modern road, it's about um, uh, 10 kilometers, which is about seven miles. Um, I, I, I sometimes run t uh, 10 kilometers, I can probably run 10 kilometers about an hour and a half or something like, like that at my age. Um, so so the, that's the sort of distances we, 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 we're talking about over here. Um, that's, how, that's how far the, the, the wise men had to go from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. Um, now, you, you, in, in the story, you heard about uh, King Herod, and you heard that, that King Herod died. What happened after King Herod died? Let's see, what happened after King Herod died? <laughs> I can read the answer. Okay. Um, did they go back from Egypt to uh, Nazareth? Yeah, they're, they're going to go. They're going to go back. Um, um, uh, um, it, so the king dies. What happens when the king dies or queen dies? It happened in England recently. The queen died. Right. So an heir takes over. Um, in this case, what um, what what Herod had arranged was that um, his three sons would take a different parts of the kingdom here, and um, he, uh, two of his sons were called Herod to give us confusion. Um, mm -hmm. Herod Philip and Herod Antipas and and, and um, um, Archelaus. There, Archelaus. Uh, Archelaus was, was not a nice guy. But most of them weren't, and um, so. Um, um, the, the, my star there that shows where uh, Jerusalem and Bethlehem are approximately. The um, um, 
uh, Joseph decided not to go back to around Bethlehem, but to go to back, back to, to Galilee, where he's from here, because that was, that was a, a different king. That was, that was a, um, a, a different King Herod. A king, king Herod we hear about later on in, in the Bible. He's the reason one who had John the Baptist killed, for example. So, so that, that's where they, where they went to. I, I didn't show the map in Egypt because we didn't know exactly where they went in, in Egypt. Um, but a little the, the interesting detail here. Where in Bethlehem was Jesus born? Um, and um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a very good source of information about this by a man called Kenneth Bailey. He died a few years ago. Kenneth Bailey was actually born in the Middle East. He spent almost his entire career um, teaching uh, the, the Bible in, in, the, in the Middle East there. And he realized that from Middle Eastern culture today, much, much of which in his early days, like 50, 60, 70 years ago, was very similar to the time of, of Jesus. Um, it gets interesting insights into what, what was going on around the time of Jesus. So he, um, he um, um, wrote us a couple of books. Um, and one of them, uh, a uh, good one, is a Jesus Seen Through Middle Eastern Eyes. If you're around there, what were things like? And, and one recent, uh, this talks about Christmas here. And uh, one the recent review I read the book said, this book is worth buying just for the chapter about the birth of Jesus in here. So some, some principles here, which when you think about are pretty obvious. Um, one thing is that hospitality is very important in the Middle East. Uh, that's probably something that we, we, we could learn. We're, we're not as good at that in, in most Western countries. And then we're hospitable to our, our relatives, hopefully, but, uh, but um, the, not, not so good with the visitors and, and strangers, I think. But, but hospitality was really important in, in the Middle East and times. Then. Now, um, Joseph, we didn't read that bit, but if you read from Luke, Joseph um, went to um, the Beth Bethlehem uh, because there was a census. The Romans are pretty good at record keeping. They have census about every five, ten years or so, see who's around. Um, they, they had a pretty good bureaucracy. I read recently uh, about Roman birth certificates. They had birth uh, certificates and it had to be signed by seven witnesses so that you really were to, to prove you're a Roman citizen. You say you have a piece of paper and so on. And there were other records and so on. So they had, they had census. And um, um, sometimes you, know, you had to go back to the town, your ancestral home. There's a piece of parchment to survive from about 100 years after Jesus from Egypt, where the proconsul in Egypt told people, you've got to go back to your ancestral home. Um, and apparently this happened with, with this uh, uh, census about the time of, of Jesus. So, so um, and Joseph had gone to Bethlehem, now, ancestral home, that meant that everybody there uh, was a relative of his, the second cousins, end times removed, that kind of stuff, but, they, but they, were, they, were, they were all related there. And so there's especially going to be hospitality there. Um, um, when he showed up there, he's, he's got people, to, family to uh, stay with there. And so, Mary, so therefore Mary and Joseph would have stayed in the house of relatives there. It, it would be absurd in that culture, but, but anything else to happen there. Um, they, they didn't stay in the Bethlehem Inn on Main Street. Bethlehem, by the way, is a pretty small town. It's, people reckon from archaeology that the population there was about 300 people. Now, what are doing is 2,000 people here. So uh, talking about something, not much being a tenth the size of, of, of Bonnie Dune, maybe 30, 40 houses or something like that there. Um, and also, when Jesus was uh, was born there, it wouldn't have been just Joseph and Mary at the manger. The, the, all the women would have been there. Almost everywhere in the, in the world, um, except in the Western world, when, when a baby is born, the, the, the women from the family and the neighbors come by and they help with, with the childbirth to guide, guide the mother through it there. So they would have been there. Now, um, what about this thing about no room in the inn? And Jesus uh, being laid in, in a manger. Well, let, let, let's, let's uh, uh, look at that. This is this is a bit of a, a, a side thing from South Bethlehem, but it's interesting. Um, so the the birth of Jesus is, is described in more detail, um, not by Matthew but by Luke. And he says, and Mary gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths. Um, wrapping cloths, by the way, is all one verb in Greek. It's like a swaddle, um, and and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him. And the word place, by the way, is the Greek word topos, from which we get topology and the topographic maps and so on. Um, there was no place for him in the, in the cataluma. I put, that, I put it in the Greek word there, uh, cataluma, if you read Greek, it looks like, like that. Okay, so, so there was no room for them in the cataluma. 
Well, that's not the only time that um, Luke uses the word cataluma. Let's go to end, end of Jesus' life, the Last Supper. Last Supper, Jesus sends off his disciples to, um, uh, to, to find a place for the Last Supper. And, um, uh, and so Jesus says, and you shall say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the cataluma? Same word, right? Um, and it says, in, in which I, I may eat the uh, Passover with, with my disciples. Aha. Now, the, 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 um, and it turns out that the, the, the cataluma, in this case, was upstairs. So, so hence we get the upper, upper, upper room here. So well, what that, the word cataluma actually means is it means guest room. Now, by extension, that could be a, an inn. But um, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, the, the Good Samaritan pays the innkeeper to take care um, of the of the injured man, and um, uh, there's a different word there called, called uh, uh, pandokion there, which um, is in Greek word. It means an all welcome. So that was more like the, the, a public inn where anybody could come and say, whether you're a relative or not, you probably pay to pay some money. So that's a, a different word over there. So so what we, what we've got is uh, uh, what Luke says it actually is there was no room. So the point at a at a, at a the relative's house, there was no room for them in the guest room. And, and so, that, that, so that, that, that's why uh, Jesus ends up being in, in the manger there. Now, um, Bailey's book gives a, a sort of typical plan of Middle Eastern houses. He knew these houses in, in, in the Middle East here. Um, was in Bethlehem, we typically built a cave at the back. And one of these traditional sites of the birth of Jesus, that is, in a cave at the back. But uh, they're very multi-generational. Um, Bonnie Church isn't very big here, but it, it's, um, it's um, uh, way bigger than one of these houses that would have been there. So you've got, uh, you've got kids, grandkids, um, um, babies, all in the same family, the living room in the center over there. And um, 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 everybody lived there. Now, if the house you probably slope down is at the bottom there, the, the picture of the bottom covered by my blue thing there, is um, a sideways view of it. So the bottom down there was where the, where the animals came. So the animals were brought inside at night for safety. Okay, question for everybody here. Who's got a cat or a dog here? <laughs> Tim, doesn't have a cat or a dog? Okay, maybe do correct. Okay. Um, do you leave your cats and dogs outside at night? No, we, we, we have a panic. We've got two cats. We have a panic in our house every night where, where, where Barbara has to go um, outside and try to get the cat, with two cats to, to, to come inside there. Well, why do we do that? Coyotes. Coyotes and mountain lions and raccoons and all those foxes, all, all those kind of things. Um, it's, it's, it's not safe. And they, they had similar problems in, in those days. I heard a story of a man in Israel being attacked by some sort of lion, lion thing, uh, only, only, a, only like, like 30, 40 years ago. Um, it's still a problem there. And, and we, of course, we, we worry and what are doing about the mountain lions being around. So the animals that were brought inside for safety, also the animals are warm. The, the, uh, the, the, this house has no fireplace in, in it. Um, in case you're wondering, the bathroom was outside. Um, and also the, 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 the washroom we wash it was outside too, and the fireplace was outside. And the cooking was done outside. And, and you slept on the bed like However, um, for the you kept a nice separate guest room for your guests. And uh, we, um, we're pr we're pretty similar. Um, okay, so, so who's got a, who, who's got a guest room in your house? Um, for a, a number, a number of, most of us do. Um, and compared to your normal rooms, is the guest room um, nicer or worse? <laughs> it's not you. You keep it clean and, and, and so on. Our house is is, is is just just like that. So if you come and stay in our house. You'll stay in a nice room. Um, I, I've stayed in people's people's houses where they, they've actually cleared out a room for me. That they 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 made the kids go sleep on the couch, and so they, they, I can sleep in their room. So so that room is usually outside or upstairs. Hence the, the upper room there. So um, and the only reason that um, that, that Mary and Joseph were put there would have been that somebody else in the family or the guest was already there. So, so um, they lived in the living room here. The, uh, the, the mangers are 
um, on, on so stably, that's really the lower level where the animals were, and, and the, the mangers were there. So the mangers weren't necessarily even down where the animals were. The, the, um, the, the, um, the cows and sheep things, they, they could reach up and then grab the, the hay from inside them. So, so that, that's what, uh, what uh, based on what we know about the, the current Middle East, that's probably what happened. Anyhow, I want to get back, back to the start of Bethlehem, and it's time for the quiz. Now, as I said, this is an open book quiz, so it's okay to take the Bibles out and look at Matthew, and we're going to figure out who, who's youngest here and who to start with. Okay, so um, where did the story say the wise men came from? I'm looking around. Who's youngest here? Wayland. Wayland. <laughs> <laughs> if you're less than one year old, it would be younger. Do you remember where? Where it said that uh, the wise men were from. Do you remember? No. Okay. Oh, no. You're excused. You're excused. You're excused. Okay. From the east. Okay. Correct. Okay. You can ring the bell. Ding. <laughs> you get a point for that. There it is. Okay. So they came to the east of Israel, and that was um, that was probably from from from. from Babylon. So let's have a little, I think, of a map here showing this. So here again, Google Maps. And I, I left on top here, since they're going a long way, where the hotels were, um, the, the things to do. Uh, that, by the way, there's a state park down there. Uh, campgrounds, um, if, they had, if they came on an EV where they could charge it up and where they could get, get gas for their camels. Okay, um, okay. so um, 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 yeah, but Babylon is down here. The, the site of the Babylon is now called Hilla in, uh, in Iraq over here. There's back down in Iraq. There's, there's Syria over there. So we went across there, and um, the, the distance is, is uh, over a thousand kilometers, which is about 680 miles. Um, some people say that they could have done that in six months. I don't know how fast camels go. Um, and I, I said if they did 12 miles per day because it's rocky and so on, uh, that would take them about two months to, to get there. Um, the, 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 as it says down the bottom there, this is the, the fastest route now due to camel traffic conditions. Uh, and a slight understatement, this route, this route may cross country borders, which it sure does cross, and all kinds of problems with, with doing that. But anyhow, so it, they, they, they came a long way. So whatever they saw, it inspired them to, to undertake a major journey here. Now, that, that's, that's a profound thing. It, it, it wasn't like, well, you know, these stars in this, well, maybe this, maybe that. They're, they're, they're saying, okay, um, the, this, this is pretty remarkable. This is about Israel. Let's go to Israel. The, the obvious place to go to Israel. The, the king's born. Uh, this is the capital. Uh, that's it, to Jerusalem there. So that's where they went. And it sure it didn't take them 12 or 13 hours. It was... It was I'm not sure it would take 12 or 13 hours nowadays. It took them uh, nearly six weeks or so to uh, get there. Um, okay, next question. I'm having to with questions. Um, are you ready? Uh, where did they see the star? In the east. Okay, they saw the star in the east. That phrase in the east, it was a... Um, I, it's, it's really like a technical phrase. In astronomy, we, we talk about something called the heliacal rising. That's when I first see a star coming up, um, or, 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 or planet, by the way. Um, the, the word star could have, could have meant anything in the sky, except the sun the moon. Could have been a star. What we call a star could have been a planet, uh, could have been a comet, um, but not, not the sun the moon. Okay, so it, um, then they saw it in the east, and, and probably it was just rising in the east and over there. Okay, now, what did King Herod want to know from the Magi? He called him secretly, right? And what, what did he, what did he, he want to, to, uh, to, to know from them? It's okay to, to, to whisper the answer to us next week. Okay. He wanted to know where the, uh, the baby was going to be born. So. Well, that's right. No, no, I didn't think that. That's that question. He actually, he actually, he has a wise man there. He asked the, he asked the, the, the priest. Oh, you know, that one. Go I should have a question in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, the question was, what, what, what do you want to know from the magi, the wise man? The time. You want to know the time they seen the star. Okay. And why did he want to know that? 
He wanted to know how old the baby was, and that's because he wanted to he wanted to bonk off to Jesus there. So, so, so he wanted to, when the star first appeared, and this was so that he could know how Jesus was. That's because he wanted to kill him. This, this, this is really yucky. Now we've got to have a little historical note in, in, in here about Herod. We know from, from, from history that Herod had anyone murdered who he thought was a threat to his, his kingship. And um, so murdering a few innocent babies was totally in character with, with Herod. Here's a, here's a list of, of, of um, a, a partial list of, pe of people Herod had killed. We know about these, these ones, but they're his relative. Okay. His known victim included a, a wife, he had more than one. He killed a wife. He killed three sons. Uh, and he had more than three. Uh, he killed three sons. He killed his mother-in-law. He killed his brother-in-law. He killed an uncle and many more. Um, uh, the historians like Joseph, they only bother to record the important people who got killed. But minor people like a few babies and Bethlehem are trivial for a, a, guy, a guy like Herod. So this is totally in character with, with Herod. Um, he's, he's not happy about wise men coming and say, hey, there's, there's a king of Israel being born in Bethlehem. No, no way. Okay, so now, back to the star. So when did the Magi left Jerusalem, in what direction was the star? It's a hard one. What, 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 when they left Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, what direction was the star? Any, any, any older folks? Parents, grandparents? Father? Um, it, 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 you're right, it, 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 would, it would have been the south, but what, what, what does the Bible say? Before, it went before. It, it went before, it's in the direction they're going. So, and, and we, we know from the map I showed you, that's the south. So, yes. So, <laughs> it went on before them, and that's the direction they were heading. Uh, here's again the, the going from Jerusalem to Bethlehem here. Um, they probably didn't follow, follow the freeway, um, but you, you went down here in, in that direction. So the star were, were, the, were, was to the south of them there. So it's changed its position in the time. Uh, we're now a couple of months later, um, six weeks or months later, it had been first seen the, in the east with the sun. Now it, it's, it's round to the south. So it's changed its position in the sky quite a bit. Um, then uh, when, when they came to where Jesus lay, um, where, where was the star there? Right over there. It, was, it, 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 said it stood over the, the place. Um, I said, well, we say it, it, was, it was overhead. Um, the phrase is it was standing over the place. I'm not sure some pictures of what that could have looked, looked like. And in other words, it, it was straight over the place there. And finally, um, here's, a, here's, a, here's a, almost a trick question. What do we hear about the star after that? Nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's it. Gone. Um, it, it doesn't get any more attention. The wise men got there, and, and, that, and that's it. Okay, so absolutely nothing. So, so now, now let us look at and what, what was the star. The basic question is, was it something natural or was it supernatural? Sometimes you've maybe seen paintings, old paintings, medieval paintings, and it, it shows this thing like hovering in the air, which, which led the, the wise men from, from the, the, the east of, uh, to, to, uh, all the way to Bethlehem. Um, well, the, um, if it was something like, like that, then, then astronomy doesn't have anything to, uh, to say about it. Um, but what's more likely um, uh, from the account, it, 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 everything sounds pretty natural here, uh, is that we, we're talking about uh, something natural, because Matthew's account is, is consistent with history. He has the dates right, the, the kings and the places and geography, um, character of Herod, all, all those things are, are in place there, and so on. So it, it looks like we're, we're talking about something happening in, in, in history here. Um, so I sort of listed some of those things there. The, we've got the, the descriptions are accurate. Uh, major, by the way, were prominent in the ancient world. They were sort of the, the astronomers of the ancient world. And the strong scientists, they're very learned people, highly re regarded. Um, they, they, they came from, from mostly from Babylon, but they, they, were, they were noted all over, all over the uh, ancient em empires then. And by the way, um, um, the, the, this was not the only re recorded trip, you know, the Magi took. The, 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 uh, much later, um, there's an account, pretty vague, about Magi showing up looking for another king. 
This time they thought it was a, it was a king of Rome, so they went to Rome, and that's because I don't know where they came from. That's probably even further than just going to uh, to, uh, to to Jerusalem. Then, um, okay. So I said, well, the evidence really points to the, the star being something natural, so that means something we can do astronomy with. Um, now, to do astronomy, with those theories, a very important thing, and actually this is one of our main limitations in knowing what the star of Bethlehem was, is we need to know when Jesus was born. Okay, so here's a question for, 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 for you. Um, 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 what year are we in right now? My <laughs> Twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. What? A D. And I know some of you have been studying Latin, right? Maybe. Um, so, what does A D stand for? Anno Domini. Anno Domini. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, which means that the the year of our Lord. So, so that was just the that one A D was the first year of the Lord. That was the year Jesus was born in. We we say, well, um, that's actually not too too far off. Um, uh, so th th this system was, was introduced in 525 by a monk called uh, Dionysius Exegus, that means Dionysius the Humble, um, but he doesn't tell you how he calculated this. We sort of assume that he added up the reigns of consuls and emperors and things, but we don't know exactly how he did that. Um, now, uh, we didn't read this, but uh, Luke uh, chapter 3 says uh, that John the Baptist who baptized Jesus, John the Baptist, um, began baptizing in the, in the 15th year of, of Tiberius Caesar. We know where that was, so that means about uh, 28 to 29 AD. And so John the Baptist baptized Jesus, that began Jesus' ministry. So we were talking by about then. Um, a bit later in that chapter, um, Luke says, when Jesus began his ministry, he was about 30 years of age. Now, the Levites, um, the ones who provided the priests in Israel, they did, did not enter the priesthood until they were 30. So it's kind of like being, being a senator or something in the USA, you know, some age. Um, and so, so when Luke says about 30, uh, that, 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 the, the about probably, probably does not include 28, 29. About 30 means early, uh, it was in his early 30s, because, and Luke didn't know the exact year there. Um, so if we add all this up, we do the math here. Uh, this comes out to being Jesus being born no later than 2 BC. Yeah. Um, now, if, if people are doing math here, might say, well, wasn't, why wasn't Jesus, Jesus born in minus one, which would be one BC? But actually, there's no year zero. So, so you go backwards, 3 AD, 2 AD, 1 AD, and then you go 1 BC. So wait, this is no zero. So, so, so that, would, that would, would, would have been, uh, the, the, the zero is a rather modern invention. <laughs> um, Okay, um, so now, so that, that suggests when Jesus was born from his age. Then uh, Matthew says, Jesus was born, we read this, and I read this, was born in Bethlehem in the days of Herod the king, and he reigned in Egypt until the, the death of Herod. So the, the, the question was, well, when did Herod die? Um, according to the historian, Jewish historian Josephus, it was after a lunar eclipse. And it's before Passover. And now we were talking astronomy here, because the date of Passover is set by astronomy. Um, it's, 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 it's a full moon after, after the vernal, vernal uh, equinox, first day of spring. So, and we've got a lunar eclipse in here. And, and, and historians love lunar eclipses because lunar eclipses are highly datable. We had a lunar eclipse, um, where are we now? In fact, it's, we had it I had one uh, last month. Uh, it was cloudy, of course. Um, uh, um, by, by, by the way, I, I, I understand that the, the, the rain is good and we need more of it. And the best way to get rain is to schedule an astronomical event or a star party. We, we had one scheduled last night, you know, what rain we got. Um, um, we're, um, um, I'm thinking that we will reschedule that for early in the new year. Because we need more rain. Um, yeah. But anyhow, um, the, if it had not been raining and cloudy, we would have seen an eclipse. And it looked like this. So the moon goes into the earth's shadow and it turns, uh, turns red. So there's an eclipse there. But the problem was um, which eclipse. And there were eclipses in both 4 BC and 1 AD. Um, for a long time, people were favoring 4 BC 
uh, as the date, but actually um, 1 AD fits a bit better with the, with the known dates of, of Herod's last days. Herod was really ill in the last days, he moved around a fair bit, and um, the, um, the, the eclipse and Passover in 4 BC were rather close together, and so it's a bit of a problem for how you all these, fit all these things in there. So, so, so 1 AD, um, the, the jury's still out on this, but 1 AD uh, does uh, fit um, uh, a bit better there. So or put all this, all this together, and it looks like Jesus was born a, a few years BC, and they, they spent a few years in Egypt, and then and they returned to Israel. So, you know. Okay, so now, finally, that's the question, what, what was the star of, of Bethlehem? And uh, as I've said, a star in the ancient world uh, meant any celestial thing in the sky. It wasn't necessarily these little pointy things, but what I call a star in my, in my classes. Um, Let's, let's go first with what the star of Bethlehem was not. This is actually pretty easy. It was not a very bright meteor or a shooting star. Nope, nope. Um, why is that? Well, because they're much too fast. Who, who's seen a shooting star here? Have you seen a shooting star? If you haven't, just go outside and wait. Um, um, they're, they're very fast. It's like, like that. Or, 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 or a very slow one might go like this for a few seconds. This a few speed. There was the uh, bright fireballs are very common. So far, there have been 450 ones reported so far this year in the USA. And the, the, the brightest of those was actually last Thursday evening. If you go on YouTube, you can see people's videos from security cameras of this bright fireball going across the sky. This only lasts a, a, a few seconds. Um, and if you didn't see a meteor, you've got a great chance of, uh, um, uh, um, coming up on the Tuesday, uh, December 13th. That's going to be the week after this. It's called the German Meteor Shower. So go out after 8, 8 p.m. to your whole family outside, dress warmly, look up at, at the sky. And if it's not cloudy, not raining, uh, then, then you'll see shooting stars coming down. So to, to remember that. Okay, so every seven days, December the what? 13th. What day of the week is that? Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday night. At what time? Okay, okay, so, okay, so drive your families outside about that time. You're going to see it. Look at the sky. You're storming this. Yeah. What about, so more spectacular, what about a, so media is way too fast. What about a supernova? A supernova, that's when a star blows up and it can be, for a few weeks, it can be as bright as the entire galaxy. This is one I, I saw quite a long time ago. Uh, it's, it's in a, a, a galaxy up in the Big Dipper, and um, the supernova is the thing to the bottom left down there. And you see that this is about as bright as the center of the galaxy is over there for a few weeks. So that's a star blowing itself to, to, to pieces there. Um, um, it's rare we can see with the naked eye, but in history, there'll be actually seven of these have been readily visible to the, the, the naked eye on a naked eye. Um, a very famous one was in the year um, AD uh, 1054. It went on the 4th of July. Now, there's something special about the 4th of July, right? <laughs> Fireworks, right? <laughs> the 4th of July. This was seen by the, uh, the Chinese here. So, those of you who can read Chinese can read the account if you can read the, the script here. This was really bright. Um, it was visible in daylight. Wow. Um, for three weeks. Um, it, to, to talk about something about almost as bright as the moon was, you see it in, the, in, the, in daylight, and it was visible for about a year and a half or, or, or so. Um, and this is a, um, a, a simulation of what it looked like. So Orion is down there, the Chinese call it the three stars, Orion's belt. The moon was up there that morning, and you can see that there's the supernova, which actually was as bright as the moon on that morning. Over there. So it's, it's this really bright thing in the sky. Um, um, interestingly, although the Chinese recorded this and the Japanese, the Koreans, Europe did not record this. Europe totally missed this. Um, so, so, that, so that, there's a warning there, the records are not, not always complete. But what could, so could the star of Bethlehem be a supernova? Well, there's a problem. Supernova and leave remnants behind them. Had it been clear last night, one of the things we could have shown you is the remnant of that supernova. Wow. Um, it, uh, so, so, so supernova remnants, there'd be these clouds, we could have seen this thing here. They're very obvious in X-rays and radios, and there's no remnant from that time. So it was not a supernova. Oh. Um, there's another supernova in, in, uh, in uh, 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 1604. And this was seen by, by a, a, a Lutheran astronomer called Johannes Kepler. There he is, is there. And he wrote a book about this over here. So we, we call it uh, Kepler's uh, uh, Supernova. 
So you might watch it. Right. Um, and, and he wrote a book about this, and half of his book is about the, the supernova, and half of it is about the date of the birth of, of Jesus here. Yeah. But what we want is something that moves around the sky over a period of weeks and months, and, and the supernova doesn't do that. So the question is, was it something so obvious, or was it something subtle here? Um, this in, inspired uh, Kepler to think about this, and he was the first sort of modern astronomer to come up with a theory, and he noticed that around the the uh, a, a time of supernova, Jupiter and Saturn were together in the sky. And again, I wish it had been clear last night because Jupiter and Saturn were together in the sky last night. Mars was, was, was there too. So he thought, well, maybe they, they come together, but Mars right now is going backwards in the sky. So um, if, if you have a fix at one planet here and another planet's going around it, then they can, they can line up three times. And that is very rare, but it happened in 7 BC. So he proposed maybe 7 BC was when the star of Bethlehem was. Um, a problem with um, um, uh, the problem with conjunction theory is it's, it makes a great planetarium show. So, if you planetarium show, they'll probably show it to you. But the planets still appear quite separate in the sky. And I've seen many conjunctions, and they're not that really spectacular. In fact, the, the, the Babylonians saw these, and, and the, 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 the Babylonian records don't make, don't make any big deal of it. So, that seems kind of unlikely. Also, 7 BC is a bit early for the end of, uh, birth of Jesus. So let's, let's end up with the obvious. Now, the, the obvious um, would be a, a comet. So here's our family out viewing the comet so two years ago. This is, I was in Lower Bonnie Doon here. Uh, the comet is right there behind the, 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 the wires, behind the power poles there. Um, and there's a picture of it I took from the road here. It's outside of the uh, church. The comet, again, you can faint to see. Uh, it's show very well screen here. It's the top of those three stars in, in the... Um, um, middle there. So comets can come by from time to time, and often we get to get some, some, some real, 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 uh, really spectacular ones. This is a, well, actually the, the first theory of what the star of Bethlehem was. Here's a famous picture by a, a painter called Ruggiotto, um, and it shows that the, the manger scene here, and the background, the very top of the picture there, you can see a comet. That comet um, was a long time thought to be Halley's Comet, or some other comet that came around at the time. And in honor of this, the European Space Agency named a space probe, Giotto, after this painter, which went to Comet Halley. And if you wonder what Comet Halley looks like up close from the spacecraft, there's a picture on the right of what, of what uh, that, that spacecraft uh, showed of the, the comet there. Now, the advantages of a comet are, um, well, Matthew said he rose in the east, but uh, what we call a heliacal uh, rising, but um, um, that that's the is the time when most comets are found. They just come around by the sun there. And a comet can come and go remarkably quickly in the sky. Uh, it, can, it can then disappear, it can then, it can then reappear again as it moves around. Also, it's got a tail, so it, it can point uh, towards things. Now, there was a bright comet in 5 BC, it's a possibility, but um, the, the most recent book on this thinks that probably it was, it was some other bright comet at the time there. But, but just trying to explain how quickly a comet can come and go. Um, in January of 2007, um, uh, during the school break, I heard there was a bright comet coming by. I heard that I had only a few days notice to arrange a public viewing of, of, it, of it, this comet. We saw it um, and then disappeared. And then it re reappeared down in Australia. And here's a picture of it taken down in, in Australia. That was only a few days. In, so uh, uh, we could see it up in, up in the north, uh, USA. Australians couldn't see it. Then suddenly the, 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 they could see it there. And um, and um, the, the Bible speaks about the, the comet hanging over or standing over Bethlehem. And a lot of ancient accounts about comets hanging over cities. Uh, this is a picture of the, that comet hanging over the city of Hobart down in, in Tasmania. You can see down below there, and the comet is uh, hanging over, over the, the, the city over there. Anyhow, so um, um, uh, conclusion I've gone over time, all right, quarter now, uh, is. Um, as I said at the beginning, you know, we don't know for sure what the start of, of, of Bethlehem was. Um, I'm sorry, I, I warned you about that. Um, but um, the, um, the, there are plausible explanations. Uh, personally, I, 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 I'm not sure this is the right answer, but I, I, I'm, I'm leaning in the direction of the comedy um, um, explanation here. But the, with all theories, there are problems about uh, what was, was, was going on there. So, so, so um, this is going to be an interesting subject, which is going to be explored for quite a long time. <laughs>